everyone else? Or is it going back to the Ember, the thing that puts Sandstorm into the loser's bracket? It looks like it's the Ember for game number one in the bracket reset. Clear the scoreboard, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Now you will see an O, or sorry, not an O, that just changed and it's that put L. the number in my head. It's an L next to both players' names. Now Sandstorm already was in the loser's bracket. Now Stingray has technically dipped down into the loser's bracket. That's where you see that 0-0 zero, zero coming from. That's Chuck. where... The bracket reset comes from, and the L on the first stock is also going from Stingray, and that is going to come courtesy of Sandstorm's Greatsword. Hardly even touched on this first stock. What an opening. And we're back on Crystal Temple, and I don't even know, man. Like, this was such a rough map for Stingray, game number one. Of course, he's still putting out some decent damage, but just the fact of the matter is Sandstorm looks so clean on Crystal Temple with this Magyar. I don't think there's anything that is map inherent that is leading to Fair. Sandstorm coming out on top because we've seen the two soft platforms taken away. Really kind of no difference there. We aren't oh. seeing too much offstage engagement to where like a longer wall would help out either player. There's really not that much of that going on. We aren't seeing extended edge guards. Stingray hoping to patrol the ground, stay right in between those soft platforms. Hoping he can find this KO. You see the side light coming out. He doesn't chase into the air too much. Nope. Trying oh to play no! This one smart. But again, Sandstorm catches the dodge with the end light, goes for the three piece into the side finisher, goes for the ground pound, not able to connect though, and Stingray has the corner control, nice little end light, but it's not enough. Sandstorm didn't have a follow up, he picks up the hammer for the nair. Gonna have his choice of weapon. Here comes the great sword. Weapon actually goes very quickly to Stingray on that right side platform. He's backing Bloody. up, this is not gonna be good! Sandstorm was ready for it. That's his reset route, right? Like he likes to do that dash back and that was the perfect punish on a Stingray. Getting so many hits, so much damage. Again, the wake ups from Stingray goes for the double one of the triple. You saw the way he was moving for it. Man, those double D lights. Sandstorm is so cheeky on it. Neutral light, that actually caught Stingray just a little bit off the ground in the air. Goes for the downer, it was really high up. Not enough to KO just yet. Even went from the unarmed cider to add insult to injury. That is going to be a KO, but Sting right here in the grand finals reset. Game one of it, and he is red on his final stock. He does deny the three stock at the very least, so his eagle, his ego, excuse me, will be uh, not completely bruised, but the scoop up on wake up and Sandstorm Player takes one. game number one. Now a couple hits also denied the JV3 on that one, but are you really denying that much? Sandstorm is really steamrolling through this one. It's hard to deny the absolute massacre that Sandstorm is putting on right now. He won in the Grand Finals pre-reset 3-1, and he's looking to just take the reset now with another 3-0, unless Stingray can bring out something, some answer to this great sword of Sandstorm. And he's really finding his way to hit those strings now, kind of more consistently than he was previously. He's catching those sort of bad dodge options that are coming out from Stingray, and he's really exploiting that now. 512 damage is all it took that game to get that 170 damage average per stock when he was finding KOs. Now, Sparky, this is a character you know and love, so I'm gonna have to defer to you. What is the, what is the Vrax bringing in this matchup? I'm gonna be real with you. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to keep it a buck on this because he brought in the Vector and the Lance was a non-issue. Are Blasters really going to be that much of an option here? Like, he's dead. <laughs> it's 26 seconds and he's dead and Sandstorm is in the yellow. Is there a character on the planet that Stingray could bring in here to shut Sandstorm down? It's got to be so demoralizing for Stingray, who's done so much work to get this spot in the Grand Finals. He knocked Sandstorm into the loser's bracket, and it's Sandstorm just coming up from the depths like one of the Stratsky, one of the members of the Magyar family, and just murdering. Oh. Now, we did see a lot of Sair usage coming out from his blasters, especially those fade back side airs, trying to put max range, move himself in and out of the effective range of those blasters. Goes for the side signature, goes all the way through Sandstorm. We've got the great dodge on it. Neutral sick coming up, not anywhere near. Side light, side air, the recovery from below, though Stingray playing from behind, full stock lead for Sandstorm. Side sick thrown out. I like the down light, lots of sigs coming out, but it's Sandstorm who connects with one. I'm not sure, because we're ah. seeing so many signatures come out. That down sig, one of the, yo, that was 
Oh, that was He's fast. He's so fast! That was fast. That down signature, like, one of the few times we've actually seen Sandstorm make contact with that. But we saw that charge signature on the Lanch from Stingray. I wonder if he's trying to go for... It can be a little bit ambiguous for some players which signature Grax is actually using when he's charging it up. That may be why we saw those back and forth. The Blasters are going to get the KO there. That's going to deny the three stock. Stingray not in a terrible position, but the Lance is coming in for him. Sidelight down air. Yeah, the, the, the difference between the side sync and the end sync can be a bit ambiguous if you're not used to this matchup. And let's be real, not that many Vraxes at high competitive play, especially not in grand finals of a Mammoth Invitational like this. But Sandstorm doesn't care. He's getting this damage. One more hit. Doesn't hit the side sync. The chase dodge with oh the air. And Sandstorm gosh. takes another one. He is marching towards the finish line. A two stock for him right there, 556 damage. I just cannot stress around that range. He is so consistent with those KO options, finding him right when he can. Even after missing that signature, still finds a way to end that one up. 292 damage was all that Stingray could put out. Had Sandstorm kind of in the orange on his second stock, but still, it almost doesn't matter. We're seeing Sandstorm hit almost twice as many attacks still find the KOs. Stingray is at a complete loss here. Do you just continue shopping around characters or do you pick the Ember? He's going back to the Zol. It's the final pick for Stingray. It's the Zol. It's worked against everyone else so far. Is this going to be finally the pick for Stingray to take one on the board and potentially take this to game number four? But it's Sandstorm already in the driver's seat, foot on the pedal. Hoping the cannon uh, can be used a little bit better than Lance, even though he kind of propels himself with it, almost like it is a Lance getting away from that neutral light that came out from Sandstorm. There's a side light, in light. Oh, he got the three piece on it too. Okay, Stingray with the cannon. Not getting completely run over just yet. Throws out the end light immediately, but Sandstorm's outside of it. Stomp, side air, Sandstorm takes the first stock. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yo, that's, that's back to the days of the Egg Soup Shadow yeah. set. <laughs> Only real ones know what we're talking about there. Gets a nice little side light to start that one off, right as those iframes are done on Stingray. Side light neutral air. Stingray looking for the neutral signature. He found stocks with that previously when he was fighting against Faison. Not going to be the chance, at least so far, against Sandstorm. Weapon toss, and Sandstorm is actually able to grab the greatsword right out from under Stingray and keep it going, continuing, keeping him weapon him starved. Yeah, went in with a down in the neutral, neutral onto Stingray. Wanted to make sure that he couldn't jump out, but Stingray finds a response, gets that neutral air. Sandstorm playing with his food a little bit. Didn't want that weapon pick up. Still have two more stocks on either side, so uh, getting a little premature with the ego. Oh, that knocked out the recovery. He tried to extend it off stage, but Sandstorm was just too high. He's able to get back to the main platform. Goes for the same direction option there. Going for the end light read, but Stingray went to the other side. Again, that 50-50 really strong for the great sword players out there. We're pretty close to being even here. We're now two minutes into this game, oh. and all of a sudden that stock is gone. Weapon spawn comes in, Sandstorm tossing away the hammer. Knows his great sword's looking so good here. That D-Light gravity cancel neutral heavy puts Sandstorm into the red on the second hit. He's just getting this damage built up. Really good recognition on the tail end of that last one to go for the three piece, the unjumpable version where he got that D-Light bridge into the end finisher. But Stingray does find a response. We're going into the final stocks here. Sandstorm one stock away from being crowned the Mammoth Invitational Champion. This is Stingray's final chance to keep himself into this. He's taken so much damage. All of his recoveries back to the platform getting denied. Oh! It's the Russian Mafia from Sandstorm to finish it out. 3-0 in the reset. And Sandstorm will be the North American Mammoth Invitational Champion.